Well, Joshua H. Pollack is a senior research fellow at that Middlebury Institute of International Studies in Monterey, California, and he's the editor of the Non-Proliferation Review. And Josh, could you give us just a little more detail about the, that study and how reliable it is that we're seeing an actual expansion of the program North Korea is supposed to be freezing? Well, uh, we got a look inside the buildings uh, at the site in question last August when the North Korean leader Kim Jong Un visited there. And it turns out that this is the plant where uh, North Korea is making new uh, rocket motor casings and new nozzles for uh, the rocket motor engines and also a nose cones. So, pretty important components. Uh, when Kim Jong-un was there, uh, there was a picture taken of him looking at a map showing plans for the expansion of the facility. What we've seen now in satellite images is that the exterior of the buildings planned at that time are now complete. We don't know what's inside them, but this seems to be a pretty high priority. And it suggests that uh, what he said at the time and uh, what he said also in his New Year's speech in January of this year, uh, which is that they're going to expand uh, production of missiles and warheads, uh, is coming to pass. Joshua, how much do you know about what may be actually produced in that specific site? Well, based on the facility they showed us, uh, it, it seems that it's, the, it's major components for a new generation of missiles. It's not for their ICBMs, but rather for their medium range missiles, ones that would be used to target Japan uh, and, and uh, perhaps other targets in roughly that range. Uh, these are solid fueled missiles, which is an improvement over their old liquid fueled ones. Uh, th these are the same types of uh, missiles that are, are used by more advanced powers uh, these days. And they are quicker to get off the ground and harder to catch on the ground uh, because you basically don't need to follow them around with fuel trucks, so they're harder to spot. Well, Joshua, stay with us. I want to bring in a, a little bit of a, an interview that was given by National Security Advisor John Bolton. He has in the past supported even a preemptive strike on North Korea, known hardliner. This weekend, he was asked about the talks with Pyongyang on CBS's Face the Nation watch. And it's to North Korea's advantage to see these programs dismantled uh, very quickly because then uh, the elimination of sanctions, uh, aid by South Korea and Japan and others uh, can all begin to flow. Within a year? Well, w what our experts have, uh, have devised is a program that with North Korean cooperation, with full disclosure of all of their chemical and biological nuclear programs, ballistic missile sites. That hasn't happened yet? We, we can, it has not. We can get Physically, we would be able to dismantle uh, the overwhelming uh, bulk of their programs within a year. Joshua, how realistic is that one-year deadline? And how realistic is it to even monitor the compliance of it as your research shows how difficult that can be? Right. Well, uh, I, I defer to others on the logistical questions. I'm sure that a lot of work can be completed in a year's time. It sounds to me like a an, a massive, massive effort. I, I do have some doubts about how realistic that is, even from a logistical perspective, but that's not my, my area of expertise. What I would say is the North Koreans are not going to agree to hand over uh, you know, all, all of these programs uh, in that time frame or, or indeed ever. Uh, I think diplomacy can achieve uh, lesser milestones, uh, but important ones. Uh, the all-or-nothing approach that uh, Mr. Bolton is presenting is going to result in nothing if we really, truly insist on that. Joshua, uh, as you know, uh, of course, compliance is one of the most difficult things in any kind of deal like this. It's one of the biggest problems President Trump had with the Iran nuclear deal. How much do you know that you don't know about what is happening in North Korea in terms of its nuclear program? Well, uh, we don't know where they keep their warheads. We don't know how many warheads they have. We don't know how much fissile material they have for making warheads, that is to say, plutonium or highly enriched uranium. We do know where they've made their plutonium, but we don't know where all the highly enriched uranium is made. There have been some reports on that, that there are multiple um, hidden sites, uh, according to, to recent reports uh, that have leaked out of the intelligence community. 
and I don't know that we know their whereabouts. So uh, just just to give you a general sense, that that's, that's just the nuclear program. Uh, the chemical and biological programs, I think, are even less well known. All right, Joshua, so, really... Uh, and very important to remember so many variables, what is unknown about the North Korean regime, which is, of course, no. much further along in this nuclear program than Iran ever was at the time of a deal. Joshua Pollock, thanks very much uh, for being with us, uh, taking a look at some of those new satellite images out of North Korea.